Speak the word only. God's words is words that you need to learn to speak. Your whole ministry and your whole life and your whole makeup is formed by words that you speak. When you speak words, if you speak the words of God, God begins to work for you. If you speak words of doubt, God does not do anything, never will do anything. He won't even start doing anything and he'll let you and the devil have it. And you'll wind up not being successful and you'll wonder why you're not. Many good Christians that live on the earth, they will never be successful to speak of, of anything. They'll never accomplish anything because it's the way they talk and the way they act. They don't talk God talk. They just talk the way they want to talk and they think they have a right to do anything they want to do and just talk the way they want to talk. But you don't have that right if you want to receive God's blessings. Now you do have a freedom and a right to do anything you want to do and you can talk the way you want to but you can't, you can't get God working on your side by doing that. If you want to get God working on your side, if you want to find favor in the eyes of God, you've got to speak God's words. Now, people that's not Bible readers, they never will amount to anything because they'll be too ignorant to ever amount to anything. You say, well, what do you mean won't ever amount to anything? I'm the president of the bank. Well, I'm not talking about earthly possessions. That don't mean anything anyway. You just have to learn that. It's the contact you have with God that means something, not earthly possessions. However, earthly blessings are for you. You can speak those into existence also. You're going to have to learn how to talk. You can't just go around saying your own thing and doing your own thing. All right, now notice the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew. Jesus is talking to us. He starts off in the 34th verse by saying, O generation of vipers, I bet you thought it was going to be real nice. <laughs> How can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh? Now let's stop there. Let me go over that just a minute or two to you. Everything that's in your heart will come out your mouth. If I stay around you very long I could go have lunch with you one day and hold a conversation with you and I could tell you Approximately, I couldn't tell you everything in one day, but I can tell you approximately, uh, you know, what kind of shape you're in. Because if I stay around you very long, your mouth will spit it out. See, it has to, your mouth has to spit it out because Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Well, the heart of a man, that's the real you. That's who you are. And when the Bible speaks the heart of a man, he's not talking about the pumping station in your chest. That's not the heart. The heart is right down here on the inside of you where the real you lives. Where you hear this voice of me coming out, that's who I am. That's how I think. That's how I talk. That foundation is already built on the inside of me. It's right down here. I put no effort for through whatsoever. I just open up my mouth and the words automatically come out. And if you stay around me very long, whatever's in there will come out. I don't ever have any sad days. I got rid of sad days. They're not in there. Sad days are not in there. I don't let them in there. I know I never have any beaten down days. Blue Mondays. One day up and one day down. I never have one day up and one day down. Don't you have some days that things just don't go right? No, I don't. You say, well, I do. Well, blotty da. Big deal. You ought to get the strength of God's word on the inside of you and you stop that junk. I tell you, God don't believe in junky days. <laughs> well, he don't have any. God don't have any. Jesus don't have any. And the Holy Ghost don't have any. You say, what do you mean the Holy Ghost don't have any? He's inside of me. But he don't have any. If you have him, he don't pay attention to you. The only reason you have them because you have them, you don't you don't stand on your rights that you've 
inherited from God. You've inherited treasures from heaven from God, you know. When you get born again by the Spirit of God, you become a child of God. That means you inherited heaven. And when you get born by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Well, I'll get to heaven someday. And when I get to heaven, you know, things will be good then. There are things are good right now if you make them that way. What do you mean things will be good then? Things are good now. And faith is right now. And God likes action. God don't like people who's always going to do something, you know. <laughs> I go, I talk to some of my business friends around, you know, that's not really Christians, you know, or I go to an old cold church all the time. And I witness to them, you know, especially when people get some money, you know, a guy becomes a millionaire, you know, he thinks he's got the bull by the horns. Yeah, but he probably don't know what to do with the bull. <laughs> he's fixing to get butted and don't know it. <laughs> Well, I know, no, but what you're doing is good and everything like that, you know. And, you know, I've always thought when I get old, I'll do that, you know. I'm going to do something like that, you know, uh, for that. And when I get old, I'm going to do things like that, you know. Well, see, that's the life of the devil because you never will get old. <laughs> Anybody that stupid, the devil will kill you before you ever get old. <laughs> if you're going to do anything for God, God wants you to do it now. When you, get your, when you get God's Word on the inside of your spirit, you don't have to wait four or five years to do anything. Do it now. People come around me and want the devil to cast them. You cast the devil out now. You don't wait. You do it right now. You don't have to wait and think about it and study about it and pray for it four or five days. Just do it now. God likes doers of the Word and not hearers only. The churches are full of hearers. They don't have very many doers, but they're full of hearers. God don't want you to be led by men or false doctrines. God wants you to be led by his word. And he wants you to understand that the words that you speak, that's what you have to live in. Every day you have to live in your words because your words creates worlds for you. That's where your world is at today, what you said yesterday. The financial status that you set in today, right there in that seat, that's what you said yesterday yesterday about your finances. If you say, well, I didn't say anything yesterday about my finances. <laughs> That's the reason you're just stand still. <laughs> the shape your body is in, health-wise, sitting right there today, is exactly what you said yesterday concerning healing scriptures for your body. You say, well, I didn't I didn't quote no healing scriptures yesterday, Brother Norville. That's the reason you feel bad today. Well, I didn't quote it last month. That's the reason you're sick. I am quoting the healing scriptures concerning my body in the last 12 months. <laughs> That's the reason you've got four different kinds of pills. That's the reason you've been sick for years. You can stop all sickness if you hunt and dig in the Bible and get out healing scriptures and start quoting them. Get them on the inside of you, first of all, and then let them come out of you and start quoting them, and they start working for you. See, when you quote Scripture, it works for you, and the Holy Spirit takes the Scripture. He takes the Word of God that you know, and you quote, and you say, the Holy Spirit in you takes that Word and manifests it to you. To you, my brother and sister. Not to somebody else, to you. Scriptures I quote, it can only teach you. It don't help you a lot. They help me. That's the reason I've got 11 businesses and all of them successful. And I'm never there. <laughs> I've been teaching the Bible for years and years and years. I teach the Bible, you know, for 20, 25 nights a month. I teach the Bible. I teach the Bible. I teach the Bible. You say, what do you go across the country teaching the Bible for? So much. Well, I, I meet a lot of dumb people and I just want them to get them smart. <laughs> the body of Christ you meet them, they're beaten down, beaten into the ground, and they're broke and sick and beaten down, and, and they don't have a joyful heart. See, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Not something else, the joy of the Lord. If you ever lose your joy, you get weak. Some people haven't been blessed of God in as long they've lost all their joy. But you can be blessed of God. I get blessed of God all the time. 
In fact, if you want to know the truth about it, I feel one coming on right now when I said that. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be God forever. I might take a running fit this any time. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You need to get blessed of the Lord. Those that diligently seek God, they shall find. Those that hunger, but see, I'm hungry. The reason I get fed from heaven because I'm hungry for heaven. You have to be hungry. I'm thirsty, my brother and sister. I'm thirsty. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. I stay hungry. I stay thirsty all the time. That's the reason I get blessed all the time, because I stay hungry and thirsty. The gospel, don't ever get to the point that the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is some old hard callous thing to you. That's not the way it is. The gospel is full of power and full of love and full of tenderness. It's full of every good thing that you could ever possibly want or need or have to have or ever even want your desires. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is full of it. Full of power and full of love. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. You create your own world by the words that you speak. Learn how to talk God talk. And God will start working for you and he'll do mighty things for you. And he does everything for you that you say he'll do. That's the reason you can have what you say. Maybe you don't know that you can have what you say. Maybe you don't know that, that you can have what you say. But uh, you ought to know it because that's what you've got anyway. It's what you've got. You can have what you say. You've got today what you've been saying in the past. That's what you've got. I tell you, God likes for people to speak words. It just, it pleases him so much when you quote his word. God says, when you pray, remind me of the scripture you're standing on. Some people pray, and they just think, well, I'll just pray and do this and do that, you know. God, man, sometimes people pray and doubt and pray, and God don't hear, hear doubtful prayers. God don't answer nervous prayers. God hears and answers prayers that's full of faith and full of his word and full of love and full of patience that can't be wavered. God don't want you to be wavered and pushed around by every wind and doctrine or your friends and their version of God. You don't have to go to this church and that church and this church and that church and find out what they think about God. Start in Matthew and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Find out what they think about him. Find out what Jesus said. All right, 35th verse. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Jesus said, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For, Jesus said, Now, he's talking to you. You believe Jesus, don't you? If you don't, you might as well go home. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. By thy words. Not somebody else's words, by thy words. Now turn please, please over with me to the 8th chapter of the book of Matthew. And you might say, well, I sure, wish I, I sure wish my faith would please God so I could get whatever I need. Well, there's a way you can please God. I can tell you that. And there's a way your faith can please God. Let's start with the first verse now. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold... There came a leper and worshipped him. Now, yesterday morning I pointed out to him, you, you, you're going to have to do two things in your life to ever please God, stay tender before the Lord, be successful, be strong in God, not weak. You're going to have to get rid of all of your church entity and uh, false doctrines yourself, you know. You want to learn, learn more about God than what you know now? Get around somebody that knows God better than you do. And hang around them. Buy their lunch. <laughs> Carry their luggage. <laughs> I don't care what you have to do. I don't care what you have to do. Hang around them. And don't say anything. Keep your mouth shut and watch. Watch every move. Don't miss a word. Watch every move. And if you will, you'll learn something. And it takes time. You can't learn something real quick. It just takes time for that kind of a spirit to get in you, you know. 
But if you want to find favor with God, you're going to have to do what this boy here did in the second verse. You're going to have to come to a place that you'll worship God like this and you'll say the right words. He's a good businessman to me and gives me information because I say he is. Now, if you don't think that Jesus is a good businessman, you'll just have to go ahead and do things on your own and you'll be successful probably in some things and some things you won't because you're too dumb to be successful in everything. I was. I was. and still am on my own. Too dumb to be successful in everything. But I'm telling you right now, when the Spirit of God comes up on you and shows you what to do, you talk about, you talk about being successful. I was riding out the country one time. The Spirit of God fell on me and showed me what to do in the business and made me a quarter of a million dollars. I made it too. It sure was nice. <laughs> you say, what have you been doing? Well, I'd been on a trip for, for the Lord. Been making a radio broadcast for people, you know, and passing out tracks on the beach and, and working with young people and stuff. And on the way back home, the Spirit of God fell upon me. Now, I went on that trip because the Lord wanted me to go on that trip. See, if you obey, you have to obey God first, my brother and sister. Obey God first. Notice the second verse right here. And behold, I came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Notice he worshipped God first of all, which most Christians don't. I can show you, and I can show you in the New Testament that in, in, in several different scriptures where, where people got healed from God, they come and bowed down before him. And if you'll pick those, now listen to me, pastors. All of you visiting, all of you ministers visiting. If you'll pick those scriptures out, I've already tried it several times. It works every time. If you'll pick those scriptures out of the New Testament where people come and bow down before to be healed and teach on that or preach on that from your pulpit, invite the people then to come down and bow down before God to be healed. They're, they won't hardly get on their knees until you start healing them all over everywhere. You won't have to touch a one of them. Now, if you preach on laying on of hands, of course, laying on of hands is a doctrine of the church. Now, that works all the time, laying on of hands in Jesus' name to be healed. But there's so many different ways. I mean, say your faith. I've got a tape that says, say your faith. I've had people that are sick like that just to come up front and start saying their faith. Saying their faith. And saying, their faith. I said, now just stand there for a few hundred times and say you're healed in Jesus' name. And I mean, you just get them to stand there right in the front of the pulpit and say in Jesus' name I'm healed and in a few minutes after they've said a few dozen times the Spirit of God starts working with them and falling on them and they'll just melt them in the floor and they'll just stand there themselves and get healed by their own confession. I tell you, you need to study the Bible, people. The Bible is just full of good treasures from heaven and it's, it's very simple and you can do it easy. Anybody in this building right now that wants to be healed, you could come to this you could come to the altar. You could just stand and say, In Jesus' name, I accept my healing. In Jesus' name, I am healed. And keep standing here and saying, In Jesus' name, I am healed. In Jesus' name, I am healed. And you know what happened to you? The healing power of God would fall on you. That's what you call faith in God's Word. Now the Lord found favor in him. And notice the third verse. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way and show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Now you want to find favor with God? Watch your words and speak the right words and you'll find favor with God. Your faith can find favor with God. Notice the fifth verse. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And uh, Jesus saith unto him, just because he came and told him about it, I will come and heal him. When you obey scripture, the Holy Spirit starts working right then. Whether you feel him right then or don't feel him right then. Don't judge God by feelings. When you obey scripture, I said, the Holy Spirit starts working right then. If I can talk you into speaking words of faith for your finances, the Holy Spirit will start today making you successful. If I can talk you in today to start speaking words of faith for health in your body, the Holy Spirit will start today restoring every member of your body to perfect health. And sometimes it'll take him a while to do it because he manifests himself and works according to your confession, according to your words. 
He does it all the time. He does it for everybody. Not only one person, he does it, does it for everybody. When you stop confessing and saying God's word, the Holy Spirit stops. Then you'll have to get your healing through some man's, through the, through the anointing of God on some man's hands. And you get it that way. Which, if you get it that way, are you listening to me, pastors? If you get it that way, uh, it don't usually last long. You see. Unless you start building your own faith and doing your own confession and doing your own believing and turning your life over to God yourself and start worshiping yourself. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. You can't let somebody lay hands on you under anointing and get healed and go out and do your own thing and don't win no souls for God. You don't give your money to God. You don't worship God and you don't bring any sinners to church and you just do your own thing because as sure as you live your life that way, I'm warning you and telling you, even though you may be a decent church member, but you're a lazy church member, you're a stingy church member and you don't worship God any and you don't say God's words out of your mouth, that same affliction will come back up on you and it'll hang on to you, and it'll hang on to you, and it'll hang on to you, and if it's a deadly disease, it'll kill you. That will cost you your life. And it'll come back every time. Just get that straight. It'll come back every time. Like this one woman said, she said, you know, I went to Catherine Kuhlman's service. I used to work with Catherine. I knew Catherine's ministry, I guess, as well as anybody knew it. I used to work with her. Catherine Kuhlman had a good ministry from her. She had more of God's power. Now, to be honest with you, she had more of God's power in her services. I'm talking about God's power. Now, in manifestation, than any five ministers I've ever seen. And her, a Methodist girl, just as simple, and can't even speak. She couldn't even teach the Bible. You know what? She didn't know what faith was. She'd say from the pulpit, she says, you know, I don't think I even know what faith is. And I used to say, oh my God, I wish you'd stop saying that the devil's going to kill her. <laughs> and he did. She'd, she'd actually say with her mouth, she'd say, I, I don't think I even know what faith is. Because some cripples get healed and some don't. And she says, I don't know what faith is. I, I don't think, I'm just not sure I even know what it is. But God had given her, called her and anointed her. She paid the price back when she's a young girl, sleeping in chicken coops and stuff to preach the gospel, and a woman preacher wasn't very popular at all. She paid the price, made some mistakes in her life, but don't worry about your mistakes. Always remember when you make mistakes, Jesus gives, forgives mistakes. Shocks a lot of people that Catherine Kuhlman could make some mistakes in her life. Well, she's just like you, you know, living in a body just like yours. And then the Lord come along and forgive her all of her mistakes and then anointed her stronger than she'd ever been. That's, that's enough to shake Pentecostal's minds up. She had more of God's power in her life than any of five ministers or evangelists or prophets or apostles that I have ever seen in my lifetime. Now, I used to work right beside of her. I mean, man, the cripple just wise up out of the wheelchair, just walk off, just flat walk off. I mean, the crippled, twisted arms just stretch out. I mean, like two or three hundred of them in one service. But there'd always be two or three hundred to go home that wouldn't get it. But in one service, there'd be two or three, two or, three or four hundred to go home that would get it. But there'd be two or three hundred to go home that didn't get it. Why didn't they get it? I don't know, people. I'm not God. But she had a strong manifestation of God's power, of the gifts of healing and the gifts of word of knowledge. She had two gifts from God. Her whole ministry was based on two gifts, on two gifts of the Holy Spirit. Listen to the twelfth chapter of First Corinthians. Those nine gifts of the Spirit. She had two of them manifested supernaturally: the gifts of healings and the gift of the word of knowledge from heaven to show her things out in the audience. And her whole ministry was based on that. But I'm telling you right now, brother, she had a sweet spirit, a sweet special spirit. She had. She gave me a special pass. I could go in her services with. 5,000 people standing outside trying to get in and I go to the stage door and, and she'd get me a seat anytime I wanted. She just had a sweet spirit about her. Once you got to know her, if you really got to know her, she had a sweet spirit about it. But it was a lonely life for her. She was a lonely life. When you have that kind of power, when you have that kind of holy power in your life, it becomes a lonely life to you. 
I mean, it's, you're not lonely with the Lord, but the natural part of you cries out for natural affection and stuff. But to, you, you can't have it, though. Once you get that far, you can't, you know. You just have to stay alone with God, my brother and sister. You have to stay alone with God. You can't you know, let yourself get involved, you know, and, and uh, with people. When I'm going to have to speak like I am today, uh, I don't even like to go out. I don't even like to eat a meal. I don't even like to go out shopping or even come in contact with people and carry on conversations and stuff. So I just stayed in the motel room this morning. And praise God. And worship God. And get up and lay back down and worship the Lord and praise Him and praise Him and praise Him and praise Him. That's the reason I feel like I could speak for five hours right now. I won't, but I feel like I could. But uh, you please God all the time by the words you say. And the mo most important words you'll ever say out of your mouth, Christians, get this straight, is when you begin to worship Him. I've already worshiped God today. I'm going to worship Him before I go to bed. But I've already worshiped God today. Worship Him, praise Him from your mouth. Praise Him from your mouth. When I was growing up as a kid, nobody ever taught you to worship God. They called it worship hour in church, but nobody ever taught you to worship God. And I didn't know anything about how, what you had to do to words or please God and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know anything about it at all. Jesus said in the seventh verse unto him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. Now then, let me teach you something. The Holy Spirit will always do that. If you give chapter and verse for what you're doing. Get this straight, pastors and evangelists, once and for all in your mind. The Holy Spirit will always confirm the word with signs following. Always and forever he'll do it. If very much is not happening in your church, then you're not giving very much word out. You're giving sermons out. Three points and a close. Well, it's all right to give a sermon out. It's all right to give three points and a close sometimes. He does the Bible in any church. I don't care what church it is. He does it in any church. Yes, he does. He said, I will come and heal him. Notice the eighth verse. The satyr answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, uh, but speak the word only. Now, if you all study that right and take this as advice for when it works for, uh, if you'll start quoting the Bible and claim it rightfully yours because that you spoke it, it starts working for you. I mean, it'll work for you, totally it'll work for you. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Now, let me ask you a question, congregation, of closing this session. Uh, can't you do that? See, you can do that. Find you a verse of scripture that covers your case and quote it. And said, this is the way it is. And don't ever waver away from that. And God will perform that for you. I promise you he will. And he'll do it every time. Every time. I don't care if your child's got crooked limbs like this. If you'll stand boldly on it, the Lord will come and make all the limbs straight. I did that for my daughter when she had those gross and knots all over her body. I did that. I did it for 40 days. And he came and overshadowed my daughter's body one afternoon at the house in her bedroom, she's a 16 year old high school girl, had the ugliest hands you ever seen on a girl. And the Lord moved over her, wiped them all off, and the split places in her hands and knots and warts and gross and ugly gross, moved them, all of them off of her, and put new skin upon her. All of a sudden. And he did that through speaking words. Because I said he'd do it. I claimed he'd do it. And he did it. And he'll do it at your house too. Any of you pastors has sick children or something wrong with your children. I don't care if they're twisted. I don't care if they're crippled. I can't help it if they're deformed. I don't care what they are. Start standing boldly. Boldly upon God's word. Boldly. And speaking the word of success. Speaking the word of success. 
Stand over your child. Say, I say with my mouth that your power will come and make my son normal. I say with my mouth that your power will come and make my daughter normal. Just like Norval Hayes did. I said, I say your mighty power will come and remove all the growth from my daughter's body and put new skin upon her in Jesus' name. Your mighty power will come. I say it will come in Jesus' name. The price has already been paid and I accept it. The manifestation will come. In Jesus' name, I receive it. And it will come. Your mighty power will come and overshadow my daughter's body and make her normal. And 40 days of doing that, 40 days now, 40 days and 40 nights, I did that. Thousands of times I said that and things along that line and this whoosh, he came and did it about 5.30 in the afternoon in her room she come running out the hallway and screaming with new hands new arms, new skin, new legs shining like a baby's skin all over her just glittering and shining with the Lord to move those rough knots off of her and put new skin upon her if, you, if I can talk you into doing that speaking the word only to God, speaking the word only of success, using scriptures for your talking, using scriptures for your speaking. Uh, it won't be very long. I can't tell you when it might happen today. It might be 40 days like I did. With me, it's about 40 days. 40 days and 40 nights. Might be 80 days and 80 nights with you, but it might be two days and two nights too. But if you'll do it, I can tell you this, it won't be, probably won't be very long until Jesus will walk into the throne of God where the Father is at and say, but it keeps on coming. He keeps on speaking. He keeps on and on. He keeps on speaking for that deformed child. He keeps on and it keeps on. It keeps balling up into the throne of God. He keeps on quoting scripture. He keeps standing on his rights. He keeps balling up. Father, give it to him. He keeps on. I just hear God saying, how long has he been doing it? Well, he's been doing it three weeks. Leave him alone a little while longer. <laughs> Always remember this, my brother and sister. First of all, God's a faith God. He's not some other kind of God. And you better get this straight in your Christian life once and for all. Your Faith is going to have to please God. Amen. And you can't waver. Wavering never pleases God. Your faith in what God's promised you is going to have to please Him. Now, my brother and sister, I love you because you're my brothers and sisters, but you don't have to please me. You don't have to please your friends. Amen. You don't really have to please your mate. It'd be good to please him or her. You don't have to please your children in every case. But I'm telling you, with God, you've got to please Him. He has to be pleased in what you're doing. He has to find favor in what you're doing. And what you're saying, most of all. That fellow opened up his mouth and said, Jesus, uh, I'm not worthy to come to my house. Just speak the word and he'll be healed. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Everybody say, I want my faith, I want my faith to, be great to be great in your sight. In your sight. And, I and I see it. If I say the Bible, I the Bible is rightfully mine, is mine and I refuse to waver, You'll find favor in my faith. In fact, you'll say I have great faith. And you'll give it to me. Whatever I desire. Look back at your Bible now at verse 11. Jesus said, And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed 
in the self same hour. That means 60 minutes or less. 60 minutes or less. 60 minutes or less. Totally healed. Struck out.